Hi, this video will be all about how to work with the anchor pane. So I'll try not to use any of the other type of panes for layout in this video. So I'll be using an anchor pane only layout. So let's get to it. So I already created a project here. Try to run it. So I have a button and I have another button and I can click these buttons. One of the buttons is put in here uh, non-dynamically. So it's part of the XML file. The other one I already programmed so that it will go in there. Uh, when we look inside the controller, I get a hold of the anchor pane by annotating with FXML and I uh, initialize a new button. On initialize, I create a new button and I add it to the children of the of the pane. So I'm going to comment this out for a second so that we won't get any button uh, magically just uh, going in there and I won't be moving it or anything like that. So now there's only the button that I specified in the FXML file like this. Okay, so let's try to create something like a uh, layout. So, oh, I didn't want to do that. So the next thing I want, to, I want to create some kind of layout uh, using only anchor paint. So I think I'm just going to show it um, inside of scene, well, inside of scene builder. If I can hit that button. So we can see here, this is the scene builder. I have a button here. So let's say that I want something like I have my button here and I want to have something like an overview or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another anchor pane like this. And then I'm going to put that in here and place it here. And if I look in the properties for this anchor pane, we can see that it has some different styles and everything. So I'm going to set the background color to, um, to green, just to make sure it's easier for us to see what's going on. And we can also look at the layout. So when we're working, uh, within an anchor pane, we have this special thing called anchor pane constraints. So we can also see the button also has anchor pane constraints. So it's important to notice that under layout, this is actually coming from the parent uh, container. So if we look at the button here, we can see the parent of that is an anchor pane. So if we put the button inside something else, we would have some different kind of um, layout constraints. So actually these constraints are not on the button. These are actually something that pertains to the parent. So for example, for this one, because it's an anchor pane within an anchor pane, it also has these constraints. So one of the things we can do here, if I click here, it will pre-fill that with 14 pixels because that's what's in there. But if I wanted to go into the corner, I can just press zero and zero, and I can press zero down here like this. So now it's filling out the entire anchor pane and I can go, let's say I want something like, now it says 400 pixels here. Let's go for um, 600, that's too much. Of course it is 600, so let's go for 200, maybe 100, something like that, yes. So this way now, this is 100 pixels from this, and because the original anchor pane is 600 times 400, we have 200 pixels for the button. We can also place the button kind of uh, uh, in the, so we can say something like this. 25 from here and now it says 517 and it says 31. So let's go for some 
Let's go for uh, 520. That's a bit better, 530. And then this one will go for 25, something like this. So now we have the button placed here. And you can see we can get a pretty nice layout. We can even preview here and see what it looks like. So it looks pretty nice and everything is placed exactly where we saw it in here. The only thing not working very well with these kinds of layouts with the anchor panes is um, this kind of uh, resizing. It will often work quite bad, but we can do some relative. You can see the green, the green uh, anchor pane is anchored in the top here and then because we're using 0, 0 and 100, it will keep being 100 from the from the sides. But what you'll also see is if I make it very wide, there's still only 100 pixels here. So this is not really relative to the screen size. It's just saying it needs to be 100 here. But there's some relativity though. So you can do something like this with the anchor pane, but it's much easier with some of the other displays. So anything we put inside an anchor pane, we set the X and, sorry, we set the, um, we set the, the different anchor pane constraints here saying where, the, where it should be according to that. And then we put it there and then we can use the layout for setting positions for the different. So if we look at this one, for example, it says 14, 14, but because we set these to zero, it doesn't really matter. If I set it to 500, 500, it's kind of just overwritten by these two. So, so they don't uh, actually mean anything if I do like this. I could also put zero here and remove these constraints in these directions then go for, let's go for layout zero and zero. And then it should move into position, let's see. Okay. Let's try going like this. So you can see that now my position is not really um, being put here because let's move it back here. If I move it here, it does set the position here. And if I put here, it does set the position here. So I'm not quite sure why it doesn't update here. Let me just, maybe it's because I still have these two. So yeah, now I remember. <laughs> so if we if we set these constraints, the positions, uh, we it will kind of reset on that. Um, let's try to uh, test it out in uh, in the program. So I'll try to move it here and set these to zero uh, and zero. Then you can see it actually works with the positioning. So this is what we do with anchor paints. We have the layouts X and Y for setting the precise pres uh, position, or we can use kind of relative position to the anchor pane that is inside of it here. If we are putting an anchor pane inside of something else, then these constraints will be, will be different. So if I take some other kind of pane, let's go for something like a flow pane put that in here just haven't talked about that yet and then put the anchor pane inside of the flow pane so now we can see it changed the anchor pane constraints it changed that into the flow pane constraints because now it's uh inside of a flow pane so it kind of inherits whatever it needs to know from from the flow pane here. The properties are still the same, but the flow pane uh, const constraints with, will follow it uh, like that. 
So, but we didn't want to use, or I didn't want to actually use the flow pane yet. I didn't want to show that just so that you can do layout with uh, anchor panes. You can also put uh, things inside of the anchor pane dynamically. Maybe let me show you if I set this, what it looks like when we resize. So now it doesn't resize at all because I just set the X and Y value, the layouts like this and the preferred width and height. Let's try to do, um, let's try to put something inside of that. So now I want to put some elements inside of the, the pane here. So I'm going for anchor pane and I'm going to call this green pane. Maybe it's a bad name, I don't know. I'll save that and close this. And if I go into my FXML file, I can see, wow, I put in something over the G. I better remove that, otherwise I'll get confused about that. So I have my green pane here. So I'll just use create field to create it inside of the controller and I'll just change public into private. Um, okay, so now I have my green pane in here. So when I initialize, I could put some buttons inside of that. So what I would want to do, I want to do something like green pane, get children and then add the button. And I want to create a button and let's just make it like a local one and call it BTN. So now I'm creating one local button that I put inside of the new um, anchor paint. Let's see here. So now I have uh, the my button here inside of this anchor paint and the other button that I created in the FXML file. So let's say I want to spawn multiple buttons inside of this. So let's do a simple uh, for loop. So I create a for loop, put this stuff inside of it. So we'll create new instances of the button each time. And let's just create 10 buttons for starters. And then my button number and then add the number I, because then we can see um, that they are different. So let's go for that. So what we can see now is that each of these buttons are kind of stacked. They are just on top of each other and I can see the top one, the last one to be added was number nine and the first one was number zero. So if I want to have them kind of spread out or something like that, I need to do something about that. So um, the way that I can set uh, that is if we go back into Scene Builder, we can see that we use the, for the button that's inside of an anchor pane, what we use in here is that under the layout, sorry, under the layout, we can set the one called layout X and layout Y. These are the X and Y coordinates for the uh, anchor pane. And so let's go for those. So go back to the code. So now that I have my button, I'm going to say BTN set layout X. And we're going to set that to um, I. And, oh, that's layout Y. So I'm going to set that to I uh, multiplied by whatever the size of the button is. So I don't know how big the button is. It's probably something like 100 pixels. So let's go for 150. And we're going to say BTN set layout Y. And we're just going to set that to zero for now. So we're only going to create one row. Let's go for that. Let's see what's going on. So what we can see now is that 
we actually put a lot of buttons here and they actually move the anchor pane. It stretched out the anchor pane and it no longer really follows uh, the structure that we set inside of it. The button is down here and long and something weird is going on here. So it's kind of hard to do dynamic layout like this. Of course we can do things like we could have something like um, both uh, two loops in here and a layout for for the other. But I think that it is kind of hard to work with dynamic layouts. We need to think a lot in order for this to work. Let me just fix something before we move on. I'll just go into my main and remove the size here because we set the size on the anchor pane. So it should automatically fit it to the scene. So that is, yeah, this is better, right? And we can see that it kind of stretches it beyond its original constraints because we put the buttons in there. So we can do other stuff, like we can go inside of uh, of our anchor pane, this one, and we can set, uh, instead of max width, use computed size, then we can actually say use preferred size. So we, it can never be bigger than this. So if we save that, and then we try going back and then doing it again, then it actually didn't do anything. The buttons will still just um, kind of um, fill it up. So it's kind of, let's try to copy, I'm not sure here. Put the height and width here at the same, because I said used, let's go for that. And that's the same thing you see. So that doesn't really work. We can't set the max height and width because the button will just push out uh, that X and Y value for the, for that one. So be kind of careful with, the, with these things. It can be hard to control the size of that. Okay, so let's go back into the scene builder. So now we looked at the anchor pane constraints. There's also the padding, which is the internal padding of this. So we can actually set, for example, if we set something like on the top, we want 10 pixels and we want 10 pixels. And from the left, we want 50 pixels. Then it will try to pad whatever's inside of this. So let's try to work with that. So it also, because we are setting just the, the raw coordinates for each button, it actually doesn't do anything to our, our program. So let's just see here. Just make sure I saved it. So I didn't really, so we put the insets here or the padding. And still we have the same result that it doesn't really affect the buttons. So it can be kind of, kind of hard like this. But the anchor panes is great for setting up something where we want complete control over X and Y values, where we don't need to resize a lot, where we are quite uh, satisfied with having a very specific size could be for something like a video feed that's in a in a specific pixel size that we don't want to change or something like that i'm not sure but for many cases the anchor pane will be usable but kind of hard to work with if you want uh, some flexibility here so as you can see um, we add children to the anchor pane and this way it will have things inside of it and we can do that dynamically like we can do it dynamically with any other kind of container in JavaFX. So that's basically it for layout with the anchor pane 
and next up I'll be looking at layout with HBox and VBox.